morning everybody welcome back to the channel uh, I got something pretty straightforward to do today nothing too bad uh, we're actually replacing the secondary uh, air injection valve on a 2006 Toyota Tundra with 4.7 uh, it's not as bad as a lot of people think it is uh, this is actually that F-150 we changed the uh, exhaust manifolds in. We're still waiting on uh, parts so it's still stuck in the shop. Um, I replaced the steering steering shaft. It is seized. It flexes one direction. The joint it flexes one direction but not the other. It's rock solid. So that'll be in today. Get it in the truck. Hopefully get it out of the shop. Anyway, um, we're replacing the valve for bank two. Now those are located under the intake manifold at the rear of the engine. Um, you On this truck, it's easy enough to reach behind the engine, between the engine and the firewall. It's a tight squeeze, but you can do it to get to the valves. Now bank two on those engines is the passenger side. So it sits, let's see if I can order it. Okay. It sits on the back of the engine in this direction. Okay. You have a vacuum hose that attaches that faces towards the passenger side. This port here goes towards the intake. Then you have a port on this side that goes to the air injection tube that runs to the rear of the cylinder head on the passenger side. You also have Another one that's on the driver's side is bolted exactly beside it. Everything's just backwards. So the uh, uh, vacuum hose faces the driver's side and you have a uh, the metal air injection hose goes to the rear of the driver's side cylinder head. Uh, this truck is throwing a P1445. Here's a description. P1445 air switching valve stuck closed. Now you could have, there could be other reasons why you're throwing this code and it may not be the valve. Uh, but in our case, it is. I went through all the other tests. So what they generally do, the valves carbon up. That's one thing they, 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 they could carbon up and then it keeps the valve from opening up and you know opening uh, like it should and closing like it should. So you could have a stuck open code or a stuck closed code. Um, but this is a P1445 stuck closed. Now after I sprayed some cleaner in here, the valve started working fine once I supplied pressure to it or uh, a vacuum. But since it was a part, we're going to replace it. So it is very, very, very simple to get to. Okay, it's at the rear of the intake. Uh, on this truck, you do have a fair amount of room. Let me get up here and I'll show you. Or at least for me, I have a fair amount of room that I can work with. Okay. See, I, I can get my hand pretty much back here. It is, it is a tight squeeze. Like I can feel the valve on the passenger side and here's the valve on the driver's side, and you're not going to be able to see it. Actually, you can. Just a little bit. Here's the driver's side valve. This is the air injection tube for the driver's side. If you just follow it, it runs to the back of the cylinder head. Okay. And the passenger side, the one that we're replacing. Bear with me. Okay. Yeah, it's behind this harness. You're not going to be able to see it, but once you put your hand back there, you will grab a hold of it. All right, you're going to have two bolts, two 10 millimeter bolts that's going to attach the air injection tube to the valve. Once you take those two off, easiest way to get to those, just use an extension with a universal. Come from the rear of the cylinder head and you can get a straight shot to it pretty much. I mean, I'm all, I'm all over it right now. So, get those two out. Then, 
I wish I could show you, but I can't get my camera back there enough. In this area, you'll feel two bolts going somewhat towards the front of the truck. Okay. Those are also 10 millimeter. And this is one of them. You're going to have two bolts just like this. Those go from the rear of the engine towards the front at a slight angle. It's not it's not horizontal straight to the front. It's at a slight angle. 10 millimeter on those. And those are the two 10 millimeters that hold the air tube to it. Now, one thing you can do straight down here you have a 10 millimeter bolt right there take that out that actually holds part of the harness in place and also on the driver's side it doesn't help you too much but it gives you a little bit of wiggle room you have a 10 millimeter bolt that goes from the back forward okay that holds this part of the harness once you take those two out, I mean, you, you can move it around a little bit to give you a little bit of room. I mean, if you have real big fat hands, uh, this might not work for you. But if you have somewhat small hands or smaller hands, uh, it'll save you quite a bit of time from having to pull the intake off. Now, on other vehicles, you might have to pull the intake if you don't have any room at the back. Like the Sequoias, I'm not sure right offhand. But... That's pretty much how you get to it it's very simple now these do have two gaskets this is one of the gaskets it's a steel gasket and it actually has ears okay that goes from the valve to the back of the engine you'll have a gasket similar to this and it just clicks in place and it won't fall off I mean if you're bumping on something it'll, it'll, it'll probably fall off but if you're careful it won't uh, and also there's another gasket that's on the valve that faces towards the air tube so very simple straightforward uh, that's about it guys like share and subscribe